Hello, 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 everyone. This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I have somebody so cool to introduce with you because I have had such a good time. I was on his podcast recently trying to like get on my Spanish skills, but y'all know how that is. Anyway, I am so glad he is here. I wanted to introduce you to him. His name is Cristobal Colón. Yep, you heard that right. He is a <laughs> podcaster. He's a speaker. He's a former search and rescue instructor, a yoga instructor. Like this guy does it all, right? So he struggled in the past with like public speaking is because he's, he says he's an introvert uh, personality, but he has overcome come those challenges to become a very successful communicator and he's now the host of a podcast called here goes my spanish nos cambiaron los muñequitos <laughs> i hope i said that right which yeah. has won the latin podcast award for best personal development podcast in 2020 and 2021 which is not a small feat thank you so much for being here cristobal <laughs> how are you uh thank you nina for having me here and i think that today is like your payback <laughs> you were speaking Spanish in my podcast, and now you're forcing me to speak English in That's your podcast. That's exactly <laughs> right. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Payback. Uh, it's so fun. No, that was really fun, but it was really challenging. Um, and I shared the podcast, of course, and a lot of people are like, well, you speak Spanish pretty good. I'm like, no, I do not. He helped yes. me. There was pauses. Yes. <laughs> Chris was like, let's, let's start that over. Say it like this. He helped me out. Anyway, Cristobal, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And I was really, really looking forward for this opportunity to have a conversation with you. Uh, me too. <laughs> me too. I really had so much fun on your podcast. And it was, uh, you were such a great host. <laughs> and even though that some of the topics we got into were pretty serious, we were both laughing a lot. It was just <laughs> such a, it was yeah. such a fun time. Uh, yeah. So now it's my turn to like, get it with you so <laughs> Cristobal who are you like who are you tell us a little bit about you well if I'm if I'm if I'm talking if I talk about what I'm doing right now I, I say that I'm a podcaster I'm a public speaking mentor and I help people and teach them how to sp do join uh, get into public speaking nice. but my for, for many years, for 25 years, I was a computer engineer and I worked for an uh, electrical company in Puerto Rico. And in 2014, I decided that I wanted to do something else. I wanted to, mm. I know, I knew that I don't, I don't want to be an engineer for many years. So I quit my job. I did uh, a big change in my life and I joined Toastmasters so I can learn how to speak and mm -hmm. gain some self-confidence. And then after that, I, I achieved the DTM, the Distinguished Toastmasters, which is the uh, highest designation that you can get in Toastmasters. Wow. And I, I decided that the next thing is to create my own podcast. Nice. I, I bought the, the recorder, the microphones, and everything was looking nice on the boxes, but I was doing nothing. <laughs> then on 2017, Hurricane Maria uh, struck mm. Puerto Rico, and it was very difficult for all of us. Uh, even though I was lucky, I was for for more than a month without electricity. Wow. And, and at that time, I said, no, 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 I have to do it. And I started having, I created this podcast, Nos Cambiaron Los Muñequitos. And this is, it's all about dealing with change how to reinvent ourselves, how to mm. deal with adversity, how do we cope with the things that happen t in our lives and how to how to accept change in our lives. And after that, I just, uh, it's been five years since I started this podcast and I think it's the best thing that I've done in my life. Oh, that's so good. I love podcasting too. I think it's, um, it's such a blessing to meet people from so many different areas and listen to all these different stories. And Maria was, was a very difficult time for Puerto Rico, very difficult time. Um, and so, I, you know, it's very um, inspiring and also surprising, right? That, that hardship, you didn't even have electricity for like a month. And then you say, Oh, I'll start a podcast now. <laughs> Now's a good time. <laughs> what did that though? What made you do that? Like, was it that you were looking around and saying, okay, people need to know more about what's going on here? Or was it that you just wanted to be outside of, uh, of that, you know, 
Because I, I would think that that kind of challenge can also be very depressing and very hard on you, right? A whole month without electricity. Yeah. The island is hit pretty hard. So tell me what was that for you? Well, first, there are a couple of reasons that I, I decided to finally start my podcast. First, I called Hurricane Maria. For me, it was the the big leveler. Mm. And I, I hope you... Every, uh, uh, many many people were they they were having their own projects and businesses, and it it's it set us all back to zero. Mm. We some a lot of people had to begin again from zero. Yeah. So so I said, well, this is uh, we are all back to zero. Let's it's a good time to start. And second, uh, besides uh, Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, we've been dealing with. Uh, an economical crisis, fiscal crisis, uh, crisis in the government. And uh, first, I, I needed to talk about my change, about how I dealt, how I deal with change every day. And I, I thought that a lot of people wanted to talk about that and some other people want, needed to listen on examples or ways to how they can uh, deal with change in their own mm. lives. So those are the reasons that I what I started my podcast. So when you started your podcast, was you were you more um, trying to reach just your local uh, community, just like the people around you that were also at ground zero? What was your idea and thought process behind starting the podcast? Well, the thing is that once you start podcasting, it's it opens such a big door to the to the whole world. Yeah, and sometimes you don't know. Uh, the the reach that you, the all the the places that you can get through a podcast. F first, I started with my my friends, fellow Toastmasters, uh, yeah. some coaches, local coaches that I know. But then I I I saw that people are, people were listening from from many other countries, and then I wanted to I wanted bec because Toast uh, po uh, podcasting for me is being just an opportunity to learn for me to grow and some people have been lucky to uh, come together with me in this transformation process but yeah. it's 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 all basic i want to when when i talk to you i wanted to know you i wanted to know your story i mm -hmm. wanted to learn from you mm -hmm. and podcasting has been this opportunity to reach out to other people and ask questions having a conversation mm -hmm. normally it's it's better rude if you see someone on the public space and mm -hmm. and you want to reach out and start a conversation. Maybe it's rude, maybe it's not easy, but through a podcast for me, it's wow. I, I, there are so many opportunities to reach out and talk and learn, and it's 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 amazing. It's yeah, yeah. it's fun. It's a lot of yes. fun. Yes. Yeah, but but you weren't always like this, right? Because you said that you struggled a lot that's why you joined toastmasters and all of that but so your so because your journey didn't start with podcasting it started with you self-developing right trying yes. to really improve yourself so was there a was there a, a, a like a moment because you said that you just didn't want to do that anymore you didn't want to do the engineering anymore you were I, were you burnt out were you exhausted what was that shift for you well sometimes it's uh there's a big lesson that i learned that that are learned that sometimes you think that if you do something good, you should stick to it. Mm -hmm, no, mm -hmm. and, and I think that it's it's not enough being good at something to make a, a living out of it. You have to feel patient, passionate, passionate. Yeah, passionate. And you mm -hmm. have, yeah, and you have to feel that you are striving for excellence on that. So being good enough in something that's not enough you should you should look out and i was feeling like that i was feeling like mm, i that's so I'm good doing, yeah and i i wasn't feeling uh, there wasn't I, I didn't feel in my heart to do it yeah else. yeah so i i decided no even though i do things good enough uh, it's it doesn't mean that i have to do it so right. i right i started doing things that were very difficult for me I, i'm just i'm <laughs> I'm almost 60 years old and I'm still learning about this and connecting with people, starting conversations, sending emails, reaching out. So this for me, this is very uh, helpful for me. 
Yeah. You know what? First of all, let's back up because I can't believe you just said you're almost 60. I thought you were younger than me. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Sorry, but that, that really surprised me. Okay, because I'm 50, so I thought you were younger than me. I cannot believe you're... Wow, okay, that that's crazy. Okay, that's first of all. Secondly, um, I, I think I, what I love about what you just said too is I want people to understand because a lot of people who listen to my podcast are leaders and entrepreneurs, right? And I I want people to understand what you just said, because you're talking about the fact that you can always reinvent yourself. You know, it doesn't matter. You like, I'm sure that when you started your engineering, you probably were passionate about it. You probably loved it. Right. I've been through two different careers myself. Right. One was a medical one was uh, as a chef, love them both with all of my heart. I really did. But at some point my passion shifted. Right. And now what I want to see is the uh, women being impacted and developing the things that they want to do in their life. And so um, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not the same mentality it used to be, right, Cristobal? Like when you had a job back in the day, you stuck with that job for 30, 40, 50 years, you retire, you die, Mm -hmm. right? Nowadays, it's not like that anymore. Now we really do want to, I think it's the more we have learned and developed and and really just um, expanded our mind as humans, the more we realize that life is super short and that we really need to pa- follow our passion in our hearts, right? Mm-hmm. I love that you said that. And I love that you're like, you know, I needed to do something and you did it, right? So let me ask you something. How long do you think it took you from the moment you said, I really don't want to do this anymore to the actual execution, like to the actual leaving your job? And how long was that period for you? Well, um, there are a couple of things that I needed to do. Well, mm-hmm. Because I, I first I was working in, I started working in some other government agency. And there were some funds that there that I have to transfer. I, I, the, it, it was for many years I was trying to f- work everything, so mm-hmm. I can retire mm-hmm. and get some um, pension and get some monies, so right. it can be like a safety net where I can do other right. things. So it was it was uh, uh, I think it was at least more than two years. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, it, the thing is that you, we are always waiting for opportunities. Yeah. But we have to be ready for when opportunities show up. Mm-hmm. I was working on everything. I was managing my finances. I was uh, paying debts, uh, and just um, canceling this credit card because I I needed to be ready when the opportunity showed up. And let me tell you. Uh, it was very, very drastic when I had to take the decision because I w- even though I was planning on, it was in June, and I was planning to retire on January on my birthday. Mm-hmm. On a Friday afternoon, uh, every someone called everybody in, in our office and they say, if you want to retire now, you have to go to the office, to the people who do all the transactions, because they're going to, uh, uh, they're gonna approve a law this weekend. And oh my if you, God! I, and if you can't <laughs> do this right now, you won't be able to do it on on Monday. So I was ready and I went there, and I did. That's everything. awesome. So, but the thing is that it was you have to be, uh, you have to work and be, and being ready. So when the opportunity shows up, you're able to do it. Right, and right, right. Yeah, and that was that was like that. It was quite difficult for me. So, I'm sure. You know, um, okay. So there's a, there's so many things, right? Because I think that um, I love that. You know, you have to work and get your start, getting yourself ready for when the opportunity comes. And I think that's what people get discouraged about, Cristobal. I think that you know people think now because of all the social media world and all that fake accounts and all that stuff out there, right? People think that they can just go and do it and in 24 hours, they're going to have a million dollars, right? Then they don't. And then they don't think they're good enough. They don't think they're smart enough. They don't think they can do it. This is where all the challenges, depression, anger, all of that sets in. And what I want people to understand is that it's always going to be a challenge and you may never be 100% ready. And that's okay too. You know, but at least start thinking about, and I tell this even to the women that I coach, don't leave your day job. Use your Mm -hmm. day job as the resource that you need to support what you want to do, right? 
And so I, I love that you um, that you said that. And I I was wondering, like, when you're mentoring, because you you mentioned earlier when I um, asked you who you were that you mentor people. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So are you mentoring them in, in one aspect? In 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 like um, in like speaking, in like podcasting, and shifting careers. What are you mentoring them in? Uh. First, there's some other things that I wanted to tell you about what, what, sure. we, what we were talking about is that sometimes you don't know exactly what you want to do. You don't have That's clarity right. in your mind. But even though on that situation, there are things that you can do for when you get the clarity of mind and when yeah. you find out what you really want to do. So there are things that you can do. You can read books. You can work on your public speaking skills. You can uh, learn uh, computers. There are things that you can do so you can be ready when things, uh, when the opportunity shows up. And, so good. and what I do with people, uh, first, this is, this is my personal story. First, I was an introvert. I was very shy and when I started working on that, then I thought, well, do I have anything interesting to talk about? Mm. Do I have anything inside me that people want to hear about it? And I started discovering things in me that could be useful to some other people. And those, those that's, that's what I call the key, um, the key method. It's uh, out of have three parts or three areas that you first, you have to discover inside of, of yourself the, the key. And then when you find out, they say, you get some self-confidence and then you say, well, I have something to say. And the key is first, the K is the knowledge beca mm -hmm. because you have to go to university, to college, and you've learned a lot of things. And yep. that's in very important. That's very useful yep. for whatever you do next. Then the second, uh, the E in the key is your experience. With You've done many things in your life. You have many works. You have met people. You have uh, uh, done a lot of things. And that experience is very important. Yeah. And the third part of the key is your stories. The things that you have lived, the story of your life that you told that's me right. in your podcast, that's an amazing thing. So then you find out that you have the knowledge, you have the experience, you have your stories, and you say, well, wow, I have something that yeah. some people can use this. I just have to work on that and have to uh, polish it, refine yeah. it, make it pretty, and then have something that I can tell everybody. And not everybody will, will enjoy it, but some people will connect yeah. with you. Some people yeah. will, will think that what you said is what they needed to hear. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the what's what I do. Try to work on the the people finding their key, the knowledge, the experience, and their stories. I so love they it. Can feel self confident and start uh, developing that and going out to the world. I love that. I love that. I do that on my. I do that with my um, my women too as an onboarding process, right? Um, and I, I call it mastering your game and game is for, um, your goals, your awareness, your mind flow and your emotional intelligence. And it's, it's basically breaking it down the same, right? Like finding, because what we don't realize is that's, that's currency, your wisdom, your knowledge, your experience, that is money. That's currency because mm -hmm. nobody has that like you have it because you're an individual. And I think I love the 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 layer too of your story because that's what really makes the knowledge and the experience better than anybody else's knowledge and experience because you have your story with it. That's really really great, Cristobal. I'm glad you're doing that. What a uh, shift, huh? What a shift in your career. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another thing that people think that this is my work, this is my professional life, and this is my personal life. Right. And this, these are my hobbies. No, no. Everything gets interconnected. And let me tell you an ex let me tell you an example. I I was mentoring uh, an engineer, an electrical engineer, and he was talking to me about his uh, hobbies, and he likes to do be on competition with a gun and s like uh, defense, like self defense. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. So he goes into a into a course and he starts shooting things, and then I, I told him, well, this is very important because you're preparing yourself to making life or death situations on on your life. So you can bring that 
mm-hmm. to your profession, to your work. So mm-hmm. you have to learn that what you have as a person, as a professional, as a family member, all that experience, it's helpful. You can use it uh, in different ways. That's right. Yeah. And you know, when you were giving that example, all I kept thinking is the precision, the precision that an engineer has to have, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing, the precision you have to have with self-defense, with shooting, with all of that. So it's amazing, right? I, I, I feel like everything we do, whether you're right, whether it's professional or personal, always has an interlink. There's a reason why we do what we do, right? Now you might not be happy with the job that you have, but that's okay. Get your skill sets from what you've learned in that job and utilize them moving forward because it's still a part of you. Whether yes. it's writing, whether it's reading certain things, whether it's learning how to organize, all of those things are important. And I think we don't give ourselves enough credit. You know, we think, oh, it's not that important until you realize somebody doesn't know how to block their time, but you do because that's what you used to do. You, yes. you know, somebody doesn't know how to put up a website, but you do because that's what you used to, It's like, we have to give ourselves, I always say this, we always have to give ourselves credit where credit is due and not be ashamed of the things that we know, but actually highlight them. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. So are you enjoying that, pro- that process in, in your career, in your life, like this mentoring? Yeah. A couple of days ago, I found out, I have this, uh, I don't know how to say it, an insight, like a, like a thing, uh, an idea that I suddenly uh, realized about myself I was listening to someone, uh, someone's video, and and he was talking about the imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. And then I said, I "Just thought about that, yeah." I just, I just felt. I've always felt feel like that. I was felt like mm-hmm. that many times. Mm-hmm. And then I, I found out when the only time that I don't feel like an imposter is when I'm mentoring someone. Why? Because I'm sharing what I know, what I've learned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. when I see that what I shared helps that person, that it works for him or for her, now I don't feel like an imposter. It's like yeah. testing myself, sharing mm-hmm. what I know. Sometimes I do it for free for some people. When I share it and they say, wow, this works. What I have inside really works. It's useful. So yeah. you can be a mentor and it helps me uh, deal with imposter syndrome. If you help somebody else, even though if it's, if it's for free, yeah. then you feel like you're not an imposter. You you can you can be useful. You can help someone. Yeah, that's so good. I actually did a whole teaching recently on imposter syndrome because it is something that plagues everybody, and it's 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 normal. It's a normal feeling. It's a normal thing to happen. I I always say, be careful though that it doesn't cripple you, because there's a difference between yeah. it ha- between you having it. Everybody has it. I don't care how big you are, you have it. But it's it's how you deal with it, right? It's how you don't let it cripple you, because that's what happens to a lot of entrepreneurs. They come out, they they have a great idea and a great concept, and they want to do mentoring and coaching or whatever. And then immediately they don't feel like they feel like a fraud, right? They feel that's what imposter syndrome is. They feel like a fraud and then they stop themselves. It cripples them. It literally just cripples them and they don't move forward. I'm glad you're helping people with that. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you you, go ahead? uh, Go ahead. No. And it's it's not important what you feel is what you do about it. Like what you say is you feel like an imposter. It's okay. You can feel that. It's it's okay feeling that way. Yeah. The, the the problem is what you do with that. And right. if you let that stop you, that's a problem. If, that's a as problem. you said, that it, if it cripples you, that's a problem. Feeling mm-hmm. it is not okay. It's, it's not bad. You can use that imposter syndrome to practice more, to mm-hmm. learn more, so you can mm-hmm. feel more, com- uh, more comfortable. But it's what you do or what you feel. Right. I actually, I, I call it a, I call it a gremlin. I don't know if you ever saw the movie, the gremlins, mm. but I, I call it the gremlin. And so every time I feel that imposter syndrome come up, I speak to the gremlin and I'm like, Oh, you're here. Okay. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you can go now. You know, like I actually, um, I, I kind of like made it in my mind, like a little ugly monster. And, and we're not going to have that because otherwise, I mean, it's crippled me in my life in the past where I just will like completely feel like a failure and can't do it. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I have the personality though that I I grab the bull by the horns and I keep moving <laughs> forward. But not everybody's like that, right? Yeah. So I try to give people those skills, and I'm glad you're doing that. Are you working with men and women, or how is how does your program work or your I, coaching? I've work? done I've done both. I've done okay. both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now is it a, is it something that people call you and they're with you for a while, a couple of weeks, one time? How do you how do you well, set that up? Well, it's it's. And uh, also, when you, when you ask me about podcasting, I yeah. I don't do podcasting training or yeah. podcasting mentoring just for people who want to have their own podcast. I mm. I use podcasting as a as another tool right. for improving your communication skills. So right. maybe somebody is working on his speaking skills, and then a podcast is uh, the right choice to go on and keep practicing. But I, I don't focus on creating podcasts just for creating a podcast. Right. I, it, if it works for you, then if it's uh, if it's worked uh, creating a YouTube channel, then we'll do that. Also, I what I normally do is I we have a, we create like a package of sessions and 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 we it's one on one, and we arrange uh, the schedule all the the sessions, and there's things that we do during the sessions but also there's also work that we have to do outside we when you create yeah. like a like yeah. a speech we have to uh analyze it uh, review it there are, and you have your own homework and it's so it's Good. we have Good. and 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 it's all the flexibility and you can arrange uh, as far or or closer when you want to have them it's no, no yeah. problem at all that's great. I'm glad. Um, and, you know, I love that you told us a bit about your story, too, because it's a way for people to understand that it's not like you're just uh, coming up with some AI speech and you're just saying, here, I could teach you this, but that you've actually been through stuff, right? Like you actually have gone through that, the, the imposter syndrome, but also the fact that you didn't like to speak in the public and all of that. And you you did the work is what I'm trying yeah. to say. You yeah. did the work, right? You have your key. You have the key, <laughs> yeah. right? I love that. Okay, so if somebody's listening right now and it's like, wow, I really enjoy um, listening to Cristobal. I love what, he's what he has to say. I think he's my kind of dude. I want to work with him. Do you work with them in Spanish and English, by the way, or just Spanish, or how do you prefer? I, I can do I can do both. Yeah. yeah. Be, uh, my, uh, I've, I've worked with people that speak Spanish, and I've talk, uh, I work with people that are bilingual. Right, right. They, they both English and, That's and Spanish. That's great. So, but we can we can do it. We can do it because it's it's yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. same thing inside. Yeah, finding <laughs> exactly. your ideas exactly. and self confidence. It's it's the same. So I love yeah. that, and I love it because I know that a lot of my uh, listeners are, bi are bilingual. So this is great, great audience. Yeah. So how do they reach you? How do they contact you? And I also want you to. Um, tell us how people can hear your podcast and all that too. Okay. There, there's a, a last thing that I wanted to tell you. Yeah, let's go. So let's is do this it. This an example of how shy I was when we went into a restaurant. I always preferred my wife to call the waiter, and she <laughs> really? knew that. Yeah, and she said that uh, she saw my face, and then she knew that I was feeling shy, and she right. was she was the one who did. Uh, they called the waiter and everything. Wow. That was how shy I was, and and I remember I I sometimes I went to to New York and I went into a cafeteria to a restaurant, and I was sitting in a table on a chair, and when I looked to the right there was Deepak Chopra there. Oh and wow! I was so scared of him. I wasn't <laughs> able to just. I wanted to say hi or say something. I was so scared and I did nothing. Years right. later, I went back to the to United to New York, and I was in JFK, and I was walking through the through the uh, the the gate. Uh, I, I I saw Simon Sinek, or Simon Sinek. Oh, I, I love know, like, him! Yeah. And and I was and I and I went to him, and I say, "Are you Simon Sinek?" Uh, hi, I'm Cristobal. I'm a podcaster from San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I'm a big fan of yours. And I I took a picture with him. And you see the picture, so and, good. You, and you don't you don't see. You say oh, that's not a big thing. For me, it's a big thing because Huge, I right. I know the struggle. I've I know what I've been working with myself. Right. So that uh, picture with Simon Sinek it was very very valuable for me because 
So it was in, uh, amazing. That was kind of him too to take the picture with you. And um, I love that. I love, well, I, I believe in God, right? But I, I love that God gave you another opportunity, right? Yes. Because, I mean, not many of us can say we've met like two people we really admire, you know, that are famous in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. So for you to have that first opportunity and then become aware that you had this shy problem, right? Yeah. And then the second time say, you know what? I don't care. I'm going for it. That's powerful. Good for you. Yeah. Good for yeah. you. It's awesome. And, and if you want to find me, you want to contact me, you can go to my website. It's uh, Cristobal Colon, C R I S T O B A L C O L O N dot net. It's dot net because if you don't know, but uh, Cristobal Colon is the Spanish version of Christopher Columbus. Right. <laughs> so it was very difficult to try to get. I bet it was. <laughs> CristobalColon.com, but I right, right. CristobalColon.net, and you can right. go to the contact page and you can send me a message and we can start a conversation. Awesome. It's awesome. It's, I'm very delightful to to have a conversation with you. That's awesome. What about your podcast? Ah, uh, my podcast is Nos Cambiaron Los Muñequitos. You right. can uh, go into the the web page uh, LosMuñequitos.com. Uh, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. great very easy to get there. Also, I have another podcast. It's also in Spanish, but it's about public speaking. It's La Palabra Precisa. In, in, in oh. English, it's the, the precise word. The precise word, yeah. Yeah, it's how to how to find your the words when you want to talk to, to oh, communicate. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even know you had a second podcast. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Good for you. Cristobal, this was such an honor. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here and And even inviting me on your podcast, that was so much fun. And the very first time I've done a Spanish podcast like that. So that was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, but I really appreciate you and I appreciate your time and your energy and who you are as a person and what you bring to the world. So thank you so much for letting your voice be heard. Appreciate yeah, I, you. I'm, I really feel lucky that I met you, that I have a conversation with you in my podcast. Likewise. Because as I told you there... I love your energy. We, we, you were, you were sharing stories that were very sad, things very uh, profound, but you were laughing about it. And, right. And, and I remember that it was, wow, this is great. When you right. can talk about stories of your past and you can laugh about it, that's a, a good sign. And that's, yeah. I, I love your energy, and I Thank always you. love the the how much we la we laughed. We laughed that, a lot. Episode, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to the I listened to it like two, three times. I'm like, we laughed a lot. I loved it. It was so much fun. But you're a great host, honestly. Great host. I've listened to a, a, a quite a few actually of your interviews. I mean, they're so much fun. So thank you so much. Also, if really. there's anybody listening to this uh interview that is Spanish speaking and they think they have a great story to share, send me a message. We can maybe oh, have awesome. you on my podcast. Yeah. All right, guys, you heard him. He's inviting you on over. So thank you, Cristobal. And guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. You know I love you so much. Make sure that you love, subscribe, all that great stuff, share. And please share this podcast out, especially because I love the bilingual. I love that he came on here. I love his whole vibe, all of it. So make sure you share all of that. Reach out to him. Go on his uh, website. Go listen to his podcast. You're not going to be disappointed. Thank you guys for being here. This is Nina Perez. Straight talk, no sugar added. Until next time. <laughs>